Good morning, and what is a cool, bright, and sunny day. It is Friday, the 4th of November, and I've got a nice hot cup of tea. And a parcel, continue unboxing. So, uh, from here, I, I've already pulled out um, Chimney House, which is a hex crawl adventure for Mouse Ritter or a Mouse Ritter compa compatible games. And the other thing I have in here is Carcass Crawler um, issue two. Now, I'm a big fan of fanzines, uh, and at, uh, a lot of them are American are quite difficult to get hold of, um, but with a bit of effort, um, you can, you know, they are available. But this one um, has become, um, has, 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 I've been able to get hold of here in the UK, uh, and is the official old school essentials zine uh, fanzine. Um, it's published by Necrotic Gnome. Um, I've had a look at the first, vo first volume, and I'll be doing reviews of those, this and the other one, in due course. Now, Old School Essentials is uh, a retro clone, it's an old school renaissance. Um, a role-playing game based upon a version of Dungeons and Dragons, in particular, uh, a version of basic Dungeons and Dragons, um, the uh, Moldvay Marsh version from 1918-81. It's the one that I, ca I came to the game with, and Necrotic Gnome has given a really fantastic um, update and and representation to make it accessible and very playable. It's a very popular uh, retro clone um, at the moment. So, uh, Carcass Crawler, the old school, the official old school essential zone. Uh, Carcass Crawler is a zine devoted to old school essentials from Necrotic Gnome. Each issue is packed with new material for your games, including new character classes and races, new spells and magic items, new monsters, referee advice, optional and expanded rules, previews of in-development products, short adventures and more. Uh, in this issue, Phase Elf and Wood Elf, two new playable elf uh, classes select races, uh, because one of the things that, that uh, old school essentials does gives you two options for how to, how to handle your uh, character class uh, classes when it comes to races ie halflings dwarves and elves you can play them as race which is true to basic dungeons and dragons or you can play them as a race and then to which you add a class um, so adds town tables rules and guidelines for, for services in town uh, hiring retainers and quickly equipping new characters uh, snake cult mini dungeon a trap filled ruins of a snake cult tomb along with a bestiary of eight new monsters energy weapons it rules for, for futuristic blades and guns and more optional rules and a referee reference guide so it's back cover nice front cover but, uh, and then we open up um, so So we're going to take the contents, and really, this kind of pushes it. Up. This, the, the production values on this really do push it a bit further forward than, than a fanzine. Fanzine is really kind of a, an amateur product. This is no longer really an amateur product. Um, it's it's it, it's it's also it's really professional. Um, so we've got an introduction, um, you know, a note on compatibility and what's in the in in the volume. Um, and then we have the phase elf and the wood elf um, again with those uh, separate race and class options again they're options in the game because you know there's some people who want to play the basic uh, Dungeons and Dragons style game others want to play something that's a bit more nuanced in terms of options so we've got basic backgrounds upon the phase elf and wood elves uh, and how to create characters um, and what they can do in play um, and then one of the features of Old School Essentials is everything is placed on a two-page spread as much as possible. So each class or race is placed on a two-page spread. For example, the Phase Elf. And it's all done up to level 10. You've got everything you need, um, you know, at uh, covering arcane magic, combat, detecting secret draws, infravision, and the like for your Phase Elf. Um, with a short summary at the top there. And it's done the same, exactly the same, for the Wood Elf. Um, and then, <clears throat> some, in, uh, slightly differently, we have the the, um, the Phase Elf and the Wood Elf given treatment as separate races. Uh, town services, 
um, inns and taverns, money changers, guards and wards, traders and provisioners, hag and, and rules, including rules for haggling, all the sort of things that you can do in a town. Some players really do love go going to town and going shopping and finding out what they can buy. Um, other players abhor it, really hate it. Um, so I've got a quick optional rule for haggling, you know, for, for, for basically playing, paying less for all of the services. And then for the page, hiring retainers. One of the features, of course, of old school uh, uh, renaissance and certainly the early Dungeons and Dragons is that when you went into a dungeon, you took retainers. The retainers still do, do a lot of the heavy lifting, carrying things and, um, and fighting and so on. Um, such that you, you know, they would be paid less, but you wouldn't put them, they weren't there as throwaways, um, ideally, um, and they would become characters in their own right, you know, uh, NPCs that the, that the game master kind of um, portrayed. Uh, then, of course, um, we've got quick equipment. Um, so, you know, um, equipment by class, um, and essentially listing all the classes and then the tables to roll on their seat. With a quick roll uh, of a few dice, you can equip your character. You know, so for example, druid weapons, club, dagger, sling plus 20 stones, and staff, or acrobat weapons, pole arm, short bow, and, uh, and some arrows, spear, and staff. You know, those are the options, and so on. Um, and then we have a list of uh, snake related monsters. So a short bestry, alabaster snake, hydral, hydral statue, mushroom-headed mummy, um, and we've got path guardian, path ball mummy, zombie snake guardian, guard, and so on. All nicely illustrated there, just, just some really nice pieces there. Um, before we get into the tomb of Umparath. Um, and this is the dungeon uh, in where, where um, the player characters will encounter these snake cult monsters. Right, uh, so that's got a nice little map. Um, it's got quite a small little dungeon, you know, you'll probably get play, play through that in a couple of sessions. Um, but, uh, but, uh, in fact, it literally just is just those two pages, so quite short. Um, and then we have a guide to energy weapons, so blades and gun, missile weapon, basically uh, me melee weapons and sort of like missile weapons, and in fact your range weapons, so things like um, ion daggers, um, plasma daggers, um, uh, ion swords and so on, laser staffs, laser pistols, laser swords, uh, laser rifles, um, that kind of thing. Um, sadly not illustrated, it would be nice to have some illustrations of what, 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 what the conception of these weapons are, but... Um, these are, this is sort of kind of useful if you're kind of stretching, if you're going to do sort of like um, uh, an adventure in the vein of S3 Expedition to the Barrier Peaks, or it involves time travel, or a crossover perhaps with um, a post-apocalyptic game. Um, at, uh, and we've got full uh, list of all the weapons there and so on, explanations, weapon qualities, uh, and even adding things like energy weapon technician and energy weapon assistant and technicians as specialists. So if they're in the campaign, you actually can find someone who can fix them for you. Uh, Item-based encumbrance, four rules for that. Um, now typically you've got two, obviously a couple of means of handling encumbrance in a game. One is, uh, you know, weight based upon, you know, slots or, uh, you know, in items. You typically um, uh, weighed in coins or pounds and so on. So we've got a, a, an alternative uh, set of rules there. Um, and then adjudicating traps. How to handle traps in the game. Um, you know, what they do, what their role is, rolling dice. You um, handling their narrative I interaction. Um, so yeah, that's there for, you know, when, you, when you're handling dungeons or tombs and the like. So yes, uh, so quite a lot there in the pages of Carcass Crawler issue two um you know sort of ex great extra support for um old school essentials but you know uh if you have a role-playing game an old school a, a retro clone based upon any of the versions of uh, basic dungeons and dragons this will be compatible and it'll be compatible with a lot of the sort of like the, the fantasy um uh, retro clones also available 
great. Hope you've enjoyed this unboxing in the Nook. If you have, then please do click on the like button down below. And of course, if you've got any comment or feedback, uh, I appreciate you posting those. And lastly, if you want to be alerted to yet more unboxings in the Nook, where you'll see me out here with a package uh, containing a book or game, or in this case, a fanzine, which I will unbox and chat about to the best extent of my knowledge for roughly 10 minutes or so, all, of course, accompanied by a nice hot cup of tea, then please do hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks again for watching another unboxing in the Nook. We'll be back again soon with another one. Bye for now.